Hello again. If you've been following these video devotions, you know that we are reading through the Gospel of Mark together as a congregation during Lent. Today we're going to be looking at Mark chapter 12, verses 1 through 44. If you haven't read this passage yet, I invite you to put me on pause and then join me on the other side. You know, it seems that once Jesus has turned toward Jerusalem during this Holy Week, he becomes even more anxious and urgent in wanting to teach his disciples all that he can about God's vision for this world. And today's text is full of stories that have a deeper meaning. In the parable of the tenants, we would be totally in the right to wonder what kind of vineyard owner would send so many servants and then send his own son knowing that they all might meet the same dire fate. As the old adage goes, insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different result. But what if the outcome is ultimately not dependent on the tenants, but on the vineyard owner himself? Israel is often referred to as God's vineyard. And here Jesus is telling the scribes and the chief priests and the elders that they have ignored all of the prophets that God has sent to them. And perhaps he is foreshadowing that God would be willing to send God's son and risk his son's life to collect what is rightfully his. Next, in a dialogue with the Pharisees, Jesus underscores that it's right to pay Caesar taxes because Caesar's image is on the coin. This may prompt us to wonder whose image is on us. Or whose image is on everything in the world? And how do we respond to the answer to that question? Now, lest we think that Mark is always coming down on the religious leaders, it's a scribe who inquires about the greatest commandment. And he rightfully recites it to Jesus. Jesus tells the scribe that he is not far from the kingdom of God. Rabbi Shai held in an opinion piece this past weekend in the Wall Street Journal of all places, reminds us that Judaism is founded on the idea that God loves us and beckons us to respond back in love to God. Throughout the Old Testament, the prophets have told Israel that they are to welcome the stranger among them and to, well, to take care of the widow and the orphan. And certainly in Jesus' own ministry, he has reminded the people of his day of the same thing, as he constantly would reach out to those who were most vulnerable in society. The kingdom of God is manifested when we put our love of God into action towards our neighbors. Now, this guidance to love is not as clear cut and it's not as clear on the surface as religious laws may be. And that's what makes this spiritual life so interesting because we are invited to be alert to all the possible ways we can express our love of God towards our neighbors through our actions. You see, love of God and love of neighbor are not two different commandments. They are inextricably linked. So a question for us to ponder today. How might our love of God and our gratitude to God overflow in love and action towards our neighbor. Until next time.